How was your How was the anniversary? Oh, it was great, man. You know, uh, it's been two years with Riley. Um, we went to Denny Blaine, which is a cool little beach in Seattle. It's okay. been infamously like queer, infamously it's a nude beach. Um, okay. And we went out there. We uh, went home. We watched wrestling. We ate steak. We oh, had yeah. like ice cream. Um, and it was really nice. Could I? Because I hadn't seen her in a week and a half because she was sick with COVID. Oh, okay. That sucks. Man, everyone's yeah, getting so it right now. Huh? Everyone's fucking getting it right now. No, yeah. I mean, this new wave has been very. It spreads very quick. It's very quick to give you symptoms and then go away. Yeah. Uh, from what I've seen, it's it's and the symptoms are usually pretty mild. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's been fucking everywhere. I think, I mean, uh, the whole summer has been afflicted with it. Yeah, for sure. I'm uh, surprised I didn't get it in New York, to be totally honest. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't, dude. It's I a pain too. in the ass. It's it's fucking. Yeah derailed plans more times than i'd like to say yeah for sure uh, but yeah our two year was great um got her little flowers card she gave me some little gifts um and it was it was nice nice uh, yeah what? yeah um we did not we we listened to some music uh it was not this music though so okay. I won't be able to talk to her about this band, but I think I'm, I might be able to talk to you. Have you heard of them? Uh, I am not prepared to talk about any band. What's up, buddies? <laughs> and welcome to a new episode of the Earbuds Podcast, the podcast where two friends talk about one album for many, many minutes. We are your hosts, Lucas and Ash. And today we're talking about an album that I brought to the pod by a hardcore punk band called drain out of santa cruz california i discovered these guys uh last year for the first time i heard like part of this record last year and i'm just now starting to get into more hardcore punk like kind of traditional hardcore punk Mm -hmm. and god these guys were just a standout for me and i fucking i really kind of Swung for the fences on this one because I know this is not music that you would <laughs> would ever opt into listening to. But I'm like, dude, I want to hear what Ash has to say about Drain. Um, you know, I was listening to this record. We've been listening to this for maybe two weeks now. Oh, and we're talking about California Cursed by Drain. Uh, yeah, Cal- California Cursed by Drain. Yeah, uh, I think this album came out uh two years ago or uh 2020, like, four years ago, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Uh rough year, but we got through it. I don't um, I don't remember what happened in 2020, but it was it's all a blur. I you know, my my memory's a little foggy. My brain's a little foggy yeah. from that. Uh, Everyone started drinking Corona beer for some reason or something. something like that. Mm-hmm. Um I I've been listening to this album and I was talking to Devin about it cuz I didn't know if it was a good recommendation for her or not. And she said, if the metal sounds like a Magic the Gathering card, she will not like it. Um, okay. So that's like, we're clear, we're steer clear of that here. I think we have. Yeah. Um, Unless it's like but, a troll or some shit, like maybe a troll card or a fucking cave demon. I, what I got from this record, dude, hell yeah. What, for real? Hell yeah, bro. Oh fuck yeah, man. I was I mean, I was fully fully prepared to just defend this record for the next 30 minutes. I here's the thing is I'm not usually into these records. It's a metal band, it's a hardcore band. Um it, the type of shit where the crowd is on stage the whole time everyone's running into yes. each other. This is hardcore music that is played in basements. Yes. And yeah. it's got you know, I'm not usually into it, but they got some riffs on here. They got some awesome moments on here. Yes. And it's, I mean, it's a, it's like a 23 minute record, if I remember correctly. It's 22 ten, minutes long. Yeah, 10 songs, 22 minutes. Uh, I think there's two songs on here that aren't even a minute long. Yeah. 
And yeah, this is like one of the angriest records that I'd heard in a while. And I just, this is just something I put on while I'm driving and it's just fucking, ag- it's just perfect for driving on the highway and like everyone getting mad at everyone because they all <laughs> fucking can't drive for shit. And, no, and I'm just blasting I- this music, just being like, man, I'm covered in tattoos. I fucking work out. I'm listening to hardcore. I was like, I'm a, I'm just, I just chat out to this fucking music. Dude. You're just a fucking badass, dude. I just, I chat out so hard. It's, this is very much a record to chat out to. It's got, yeah, the, um, the lyrics are nothing crazy. It's all pretty much just like, fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't like me, you know? then fuck you, and fuck yeah. you if you don't like me. And you're like, okay, cool. And you know, I don't know. It doesn't need to be more complex than that. The delivery of the vocalist is is very like, kind of a high, uh, it, like it, it, fuzzy vocal. It's not like scratchy. Yeah, it, it's it it's a little. It's kind of. It could be kind of screechy, and that's kind of his mo- the the main register that he's on yeah. most of the time. But um, it's, but it's it doesn't get annoying. Like it doesn't get grating to me. No, I think I think the twenty two minute runtime helps honestly. But I think it's not. It's it doesn't hurt to listen. No, he to. he has a killer fucking scream, man. Like and and it sounds like he's just doing it right. So it, it's not yeah, strained. Right. It's it's not like a, a like a brutal thing. It's just like really fucking good screaming. It sounds like he could do it all night, right? Which is exactly, which is kind of nice because it's like sometimes vocalists don't come at shit like that, and it almost hurts your throat listening to them throughout the record. That's it's like you can, know you're like oh god, dude, you're bleeding. It's like oh dude, you're throwing out your voice big time with this. Yeah, shit. yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's I could very much understand if it is not your the type of vocal you want to listen to on an album, but I think it goes really well with the music. It's got it, attitude on it. It's got yes. a little it's got a little bite to it. You know? Yeah, it's got some, he's got some stank, some fucking, you know, like sp- some spite, some yeah, resentment he, on his voice. He'll just like he'll just like make noises, you know. But he also has like he can do he can growl. And he has some great time, yeah. like, you know, things he he's got some I, great O's and rough, you know, type <laughs> stuff where he'll just like bark right before a, a breakdown. And it's just like, oh, yeah, it's, I'm a, they, I, I love it every time. Of course, the classic like, uh, go ahead, make my day. But it didn't did it did it, you know, like saying saying shit right before a breakdown or something. Yeah. He does that like three times on this record. It's great every time. <laughs> yeah. I there's uh I think it's on uh weeding out the the process of weeding out when there's like a breakdown and then he's goodbye and then it's like another breakdown that's heavier and it's like holy shit. Yeah, it's is that the oh no, it's character fraud where they like have a fucking sick ass like Pantera y sort of chuggy riff that they only do for a measure or two. And and then it maybe every time I was like, oh man, I wish they would play that longer. And then they brought it back like 20 seconds later, but slower. And I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. That, they, that's that's a lot of the shit they do on here. Yes. They they have a lot of different parts in every song and a lot of different speeds, a lot of different like is the drummer is the drummer going crazy? Do got to got to got to are we kind of grooving with it? You know, right. and it changes like pretty frequently throughout the record. Yeah. There's a lot of like groove uh riffs on this record. It's it's an interesting so like listening when I started getting into hardcore music, it, it was pretty eye-opening to me because my favorite type of metal when I got really into metal was metal core. And mm-hmm. it was, you know, Kill Switch and Chimera and all of those bands, like so many sure. fucking bands. Yeah. And I never really understood why they called it metalcore because I never listened to hardcore punk. I listened to a lot of punk, but just not hardcore. I didn't like it when I was growing up. Yeah. And to be fair, I don't think I think there's been like a renaissance of hardcore punk in the last few years. And sure. Some, yeah. some of my I favorite. Hardcore, I mean, you know, like look at Turnstile, like for a hardcore band, like how fucking big they've made it, you know, yeah. so. 
Um, definitely getting into newer stuff, but when I would listen to when I was listening to Kill Switch all the time, I didn't really understand the moniker of metalcore. And now that I'm getting into hardcore punk, I I understand better now. Where it's like, oh, what metalcore was was just kind of like traditional kind of melodic metal music with breakdowns. <laughs> and yeah, and that's sure. that's kind of what it was. So like this this album is. Out of 22 minutes, I would say there's like 12 minutes of breakdowns. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Every there's, song has a breakdown, if not after every chorus, you know, at least like once in the song. So it's just it's just so much of that that it's just so fucking satisfying to listen to if there, you love that shit. There's a lot of it and they're really good at it. I'll they're say. really fucking good at it. I, it's I don't I wasn't necessarily impressed with like any riffs on this record or anything. They were just. They I, were just good. I mean, I thought there were some great fucking riffs on this record. I, I, I guess it's it could be more about the mood though, right? Yeah, Is that be, like, yeah. If you just isolated the guitar, the riff itself wouldn't stand so well on its own. But it's just supported by like these these like thrashy bashing drums, this fucking mean bass, uh, these scratchy vocals. It all yeah. comes together and melds so well. That's what I mean. It's, it's I think so much of what I like about the riffs on the album is the way that they're played. It's not necessarily the riff. It's the rhythm that they play the riff in. Yeah. yeah and sure. how, how much syncopation the guitars, the drums and the bass all have with each other. And even yeah. at times, the vocalist is his vocal cadence is just the riff. You know, it's just the rhythm of the song. And it's just, yeah, man, they just they're so that's what makes it so grooving to me. This the, for a hardcore record, I'm like, they're all just so in sync with each other. And there's this kind of like driving locomotive type energy on so many of these songs, you know, and and it's I, to, I, to me, it's like they're one of the best modern hardcore bands that I've heard, like some of one of my favorites. So I just love that you fucking love them. Like, that's it, that. Yeah, my you day, know, man. I'm really not listening to any hardcore at the moment. Um, I, I listen to Gouge Away. I've been listening to like old, like scene core stuff, like Attack Attack lately. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't, you know, that's just kind of come out of nowhere. Yeah, um, I mean, you, you don't listen to like, uh, have you heard Scowl? No, I haven't heard Scowl. Backtrack? Nope. Okay, yeah, like, th- those are all the ones that I've gotten really into lately, is like Scowl, Backtrack, Gulch, these guys, like, all these really fucking kind of crazy, goofy names. Yeah, uh, yeah there's just this, this, like, onslaught of new hardcore coming out. So, like, quick background on this, like, they, on the band, they weren't even gonna, they weren't even sure what type of music they were gonna play when they first got together. Oh, Interesting. It was the the bassist that eventually became the guitarist. His name's Cody. He was the one that decided that they should try and do some sort of thrash crossover band. I mean, it's that's so odd to hear because they seem very focused and honed in on this like thrash metal thing they're doing. Yeah, but like, do you hear a lot of thrash on this record? Because I don't. I. I mean, there are definitely thrash moments. I guess they aren't as common as just like metal breakdowns or uh, these like groovy riffs they like to do. Yeah, that's what I mean. There wasn't a lot of to me. Thrash is like kind of uh, what's that rhythm called? Blast beats. I mean, blast beat. <laughs> yeah, it's I kind mean, of more. They have their beat. moments, and they they have their moments that remind me. I think it's impossible to listen to Hollister Daydreamer and not think of like old Dude, 80s old Metallica. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's impossible not to think of Metallica with the acoustic guitar with the super affected lead guitar kind of over it. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I hate that song. <laughs> I fucking well, hated it. It's only a minute long, so you only got to hate it yeah. for, for a second. <laughs> it's just the production of it's horrible. It sounds like Cowboys from Hell or uh, Unforgiven, like one of those type songs yeah, where it's which, like this really bright, jangly acoustic guitar for a minute, and then all of a sudden this 
horrible, cheesy, distorted guitar comes in to play it's like a like ridiculously <laughs> reverbed, delayed, horrible. phasey guitar comes in. It's horrible. The 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 first it it like Cowboys from Hell might be one of the best metal songs ever written, but the first two minutes I fucking hate. <laughs> I only like it when it gets a, I'll take this love, sick love child. Wait, am I thinking of Cowboys from Hell? Well, Cowboys from Hell is the, is the, um, Is that right? the whole time? I think so. I, again, oh, you know I'm not I'm really like. Of, yeah, I'm thinking of one from Vogel Display of Power. I think it's called like Love Sick or. Something like that. It's In any love. case, I can imagine what you're talking about. Yeah, this yeah. Is, that's like so indicative of of like so many metal songs that start off this way or have like this in the middle, right? Um, yeah. Really, but, and it's and it's never worked for me. I've never liked the sound. I've always thought it was so lame. But there's also a good amount of like, <laughs> I I don't know any jet band certainly. Um, but there's a little bit of kind of gent influence in here, I feel, with the with the syncopation that you were talking about. Okay, yeah, I don't I've I don't listen to any gent at all. I hate that way that I hate that metal that guitar. I hate the way they play that guitar. Sure. And so I, I can't do it. I can't do gent riffs. Um so I didn't thankfully I didn't hear that on this record. <laughs> <laughs> but well, it'll be fair like i didn't really hear thrash either but thrash just sounds so much like punk to me anyway that this album just feels like a punk record to me and it's just it's just a heavy punk album it kind of reminds me of a uh, like evergreen terrace or something from back in the day i think i think it is a lot i think it has I don't know. Again, as as a person who doesn't really listen to metal that much, it feels like there's a lot of thrash metal vibes in here, not like thrash punk or anything or just thrash. But right. like, I don't know. There are definitely some some blast beat moments on here um, that are always paralleled with these slower, heavier moments. Chuggies. There's hardly ever there's a song that does. There's hardly ever a song that just does one vibe the whole time. Yeah, for sure. Right. Even in a minute and a half or two minutes, there's yeah. It, it usually, it's like every section is a different type of pretty much. Yeah, yeah, a different type of music. Um, but I I think the best way to describe them is how a writer from Stereo Gum described them, which is just old school California fight music. <laughs> this album is so angry, dude. It is. It is extremely angry. It's so um, aggressive. Like. Like direct aggression, you know, not passive at all. Active aggression on this album. Aggressive to no. the point where it almost sounds like the musicians at times when they're playing, like the guys in the band sound a little too into the songs because they kind of seem like they get ahead of themselves a little bit at times. That's another sure. thing that I like about this record is that it's not perfect. Like this doesn't sound like metal to me that would come out right now because that shit is so programmed and and, you know, they make it so scientifically exact, like metal nowadays, that it, yeah. it doesn't have much of a groove to me. And it's not that fun to listen to, like, especially shit like Gent is probably a perfect example of that. Yeah. So listening to this, I love that you can sometimes the drummer didn't play that that fill perfectly. Sometimes they might yeah, have there's... sped up the tempo a little bit because it's almost like they're getting excited. Like they're so fucking bad that they're just like just playing the fucking they're song it's like get, yeah they get, they're getting so into it and it yeah and I, you can feel it and i think it's adds so much fucking energy to this album yeah it, no they it, they they have a palpable anger and i i feel like i would die at their uh at their fucking live shows yeah this is a band that i i, I really like i don't them, plan on seeing I, i'm never gonna see them live this is fun. this is not my type of energy that I, I I can get into, but I love that this album is so fucking angry. Like you said, all the lyrics are so much fuck you. If you don't fucking like me, you can go fuck yourself type lyrics. Yeah. And then apparently the singer Sammy has been described as having like golden retriever energy, but they're all like super nice. And they're actually like a really positive band. Oh man. And, and you know, and they're, and they're trying to well, bring back that kind of old, that older, you know, the original hardcore kind of 
thing of like being good to each other, being welcoming of everyone. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, and like that's yeah. what it was for. Like that's why the scene even was created. So yeah. it's cool to like hear that these guys are bringing back the positivity and the the unity, the the l- l- let's look out for each other, but also in their lyrics they're just like, but if you're a fucking you know, asshole, you can go fuck yourself. I mean, he's got a great way to let out his aggression, doesn't he? Yeah, you know? for sure. This is such a, I'm sure it's such a <laughs> You can't outlet. hold on to onto that all day. I'm sure it's such an outlet. Uh, uh is there anything else we wanted to talk about before we got into some some ratings and some nugs? Well, just a couple of like you know, parts of the music that I that I love also is like I love the guitar tones. They're just super super hyper distorted. Yes, right. And and I to me it doesn't sound like they're listen, they're using the best quality equipment and the best quality guitars and everything and it just adds this raw like gritty feel to the it, whole thing it sounds you know it sounds nice the production isn't like the best high quality or anything but it's perfect for what they're doing and yeah. i feel like the offset of the guitars being so distorted that you can almost like have no idea what they're playing the yeah. the bass kind of gives you that attack that oh, clarifies man. the music a little more the bass might be my favorite aspect of the mix uh, of, I, of this. Album. You know, we love this kind of bass, dude. Come yeah. on. Yeah. It's like, like front and center and like punchy and springy. And it's and it added so much body to the guitars Yeah. that it was, it was so fucking perfect. And it's like so smart to make the bass as loud as they did on this record, because with without it, the music would all sound like like probably to mids and, and treble, like way too Yeah, yeah. In. It it would all be kind of centered in this little little frequency region that would kind of make it sound it would kind of like be numbing after a while and uh yeah. would it would probably make start it giving you a headache. Much, I guess. It would uh, it would probably give me a headache. Yeah, sure. Like honestly. Yeah. And and uh and I listened to this album in multiple different uh places. So like in my car uh on my phone walking around and then i just listened to it on like my shitty laptop speaker yeah and in all of those scenarios uh the bass was so fucking front and center yeah. in the mix that i was like god damn even on my shitty ass hp laptop speakers that bass <laughs> is still fucking super present and uh and that's i think that's my favorite aspect of of the of the way they mixed it fuck yeah dude and the drums are super loud, which I also I, like. yeah. The drums, of course, are super punchy. They're super yeah. like, they're super tight, especially that kick. Um, the cymbals are nice and splashy, like you need in in songs that are like this, this much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? It's and it's it's crazy how much it all works so well together. It is such a loud, um, fucking heavy, angry record. And for it to sound that good and not feel like draining, you know, no pun intended. It's yeah. it's really fucking well mixed, like legitimately. Yeah, I think it's great. What would you rate this record? Um, you know, it's uh, I'm gonna I I had a lot of fun with this one. I love the riffs. I I love the rhythms. I I think the vocalist grew on me after a bit. Mm, okay. Um, it's kind of like a you know like kind of at all cost ish like different. We've talked a about a little few bit. bands now that yeah that it's like the singer yeah. kind of does the one thing, and you like it or you don't you know. Yeah, so right. when I and first it's... after I told you that we were gonna listen to this record, I immediately put it on. <laughs> and and then you were like, uh, "Fuck, fuck." She said. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, "Fuck, I made a huge mistake." I, you know, and that's. <laughs> I'm glad you showed me this record. I think. Nice. I I almost recommended it to Devin, and then I listened to it afterwards and thought, "Oh man, no, she's not gonna like this." Okay. Okay. It's it's kind of got this like, it is very metal, you know. It's very metal, and it, uh, like in the first song, I think there's this like very metal sounding solo. And yeah. it, 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 like the solos aren't great on this record, but thankfully they're sparse. They're sparse, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but I had a lot of fun. I was banging my head on the bus. There were some oh, moments yeah. that really caught me. I'm going to give this record, uh, I'm going to give this record a 7.8. Solid. Love that. Uh, I, that's, I got, I got no complaints. I think I just don't, I don't usually like this music. I don't usually listen to this music in my off time, but it's been, right. I, you know, I don't know. I've been really excited to listen to new music and, uh, this has been a great podcast for that. Obviously. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, this is so. This is a crossover hit, man. Drain is a crossover hit. You don't usually listen to music like this, and the fact that you like it, uh, that's a that's a pretty fucking big deal. I think, I think if it was this for forty minutes, I would get tired of it. It's it's the perfect length. I mean, who wants to listen to to forty five minutes of of hardcore punk metal shit? You know, thrash, I whatever. I don't. I don't either. But I can listen to 22 minutes of this and and feel like it went by fast, you know. I think I think that's part of the the punk mentality of this band and this record is like we're not doing the, like the eight and a half minute metal songs. We're getting in, we're getting out. We got these things that we want to do. We're gonna scream yeah. about some motherfuckers and we're gonna we're gonna fucking stay and make it great while we can. And it's gonna be balls to the wall two minutes at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And you could be mistaken uh, for having some songs just like meld into each other, especially oh, with the yeah. with the very sharp beginnings and endings that some of them have going into the next check track. Yeah. It happened more than once. Every time I listen to it, I'm like, oh, this is the next song. Oh, shit. Uh, I, I feel like a uh, sick one always like blew past me like it was so fast that I didn't even notice. Yeah. It was coming I mean, it's through. It's 58 it was a seconds. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that could be. That you can be forgiven for that. Uh, but a seven point eight from me, man. Oh, I yeah. I'm curious to see what you're gonna rate it. You said you've been listening to this for a while. Um, how did you find out about these guys? I don't think we talked about that. I th- it w- it must have been uh because somehow through Turnstile I started kind of you know looking at related mm-hmm. artists and I think that's how I found Backtrack and Scowl was uh just kind of recommended to me on spotify because of of turnstile mm. and and then i found these guys just randomly throughout that like gulch i found at, the, at that same time and then i found these guys right around the same time and it was kind of i go i you know i go into like little um phases of shit so like i started getting <laughs> hardcore like two years ago three years ago and yeah. so that's all i listened to for like a month or two and, uh, right, and then yeah. I, found, I found the bands I really like, and then I I dipped, and now now those are part of my personality, you know. Like, <laughs> uh, that's that's how I found these guys, just kind of through you know like degrees of separation from Turnstile, and yeah, man, this is you know Backtrack was the first hardcore band of all the ones that I checked out that I was like, yeah, this connects with me, this is fucking sick, and then Drain, in my opinion, is a better version of it. Oh so shit, these guys. Okay. Are, pop for me with uh, at hardcore right now so yeah they're one of, they're my favorites doing it right now um their their newest album living proof is fucking great it's a little different but it's fucking great uh and yeah so i'm gonna give this like uh i'm gonna give it an eight an eight wait is that just because i went so high did were you gonna give it a lower grade I, th- I was actually, and I think it has to be higher than yours. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> I definitely like these guys more. I was surprised it's you like, gave it such a high score, but for me, it's it's for similar reasons why I wouldn't go higher is because the, I like I'm liking hardcore punk now. Like you know, I'm very selective with the hardcore punk that I like now. But yeah. this is this is just one of those bands that was a crossover hit for me too. You know, it's it's these are my I'm dipping my toes, and these guys are one of the yeah. ones that that really fucking stuck with me. I think I think it's going to be a lot like the um, like you said earlier, uh, Circle of Demons at all costs, mm-hmm. uh, much like that album. I gave this a 7.8. I'm not going to be listening to it a lot, but right. I am going to get in the mood for it and it's going to hit the spot. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, exactly. Now, like now, you know that this. Album yeah. And now I know. And, and, and now I know who to go to. It has a time oh, and train. Like I told you, when I was listening to this was like the I was it put me in a mood. So I like I know that if I listen to this album, like I'm going to get angry and release some aggression 
and uh and it has to be time and place man i can't do that shit you know right before if i do that shit before i meet up with my parents somewhere like it's gonna it's not gonna it's gonna, it's gonna get a little messy yeah it's gonna get messy but do you have any honorable mentions on this album like any songs that you liked a lot yeah, I do have some some honorable mentions. I like hyper hyper vigilance. Yeah, dude, that is one of my choice nugs. Oh shit, let's talk about it. Yeah, I really really like that. Um, uh, that was the first. That was this. That's the second song on the album, and I felt like it should have been the first. And because uh, I feel I feel the pressure is just kind of like such a whatever song. In my opinion. I, you know, I easy. We might be talking about that one later. Okay. Okay. Well, I, what I like it, I like the chuggy uh, like intro of hypervigilance, and then it just goes into classic hardcore punk stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, it's super chuggy, super kicky. Um, coming out with a bang, not wasting any time. Yeah, sick breakdown after the after uh, the second chorus, I think, or it might be after each chorus. It's just this two measure breakdown right before they go back into the verse. Yeah, right. And uh, and that was the first song that I noticed how loud the bass was and, and started like really. Yeah, I, that bass was, must be slamming on those strings because you don't yeah. you don't get that kind of noise unless you're really like. I wish there was. You remember how I feel like back in the day, bands were way more kind of open about the equipment that they used. I, where I don't know where Do to find that's that. not a, th- a thing anymore. I feel like I, I don't know where to find that information anymore. I feel like it's all on YouTube. I feel like every uh, every artist over a hundred thousand plays on Spotify has has some kind of like really gear. Here's my rig video, or like yeah, I'm, I I don't know. I haven't I I didn't. Oh wait, fuck, you're right. Rig rundown three weeks ago. Yeah, dude. If they were on Audio Tree, they got a rig rundown. Come on. Yeah. Oh my god. Hell yeah. Well, there you go. That exists because I've been so curious, man. <laughs> it looks like he uses a Jackson, which is pretty fucking sick. It's very thrashy of him. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, hypervigilance, one of my choice names for sure. Vigilance. Fucking um, sick. Man. Well, then let me uh, let me let me give you my second honorable, okay. um, which oddly enough was bad faith. Okay, I feel like that was the most punk out of any like kind of traditional punk out of any song on the record. I, well, I think I might give that to sick one, but well, it definitely, yeah. right. It definitely is fast paced, but it does have its slower moments. It does have its chuggy, bassy, chuggy moments. Yeah. And I just thought the, the, it kind of had this weird stop and start energy about it that like, you weren't sure when you were supposed to be headbanging. <laughs> um, but so so fun so good but my first nug which i alluded to is uh feel the pressure first song on the album i mean it it does set up the whole record pretty much like pretty well i think i think i chose this one because i listen to metal so little and Mm. that first riff you know sounds it's very stereotypical very like a very overplayed kind of thing in metal but i was coming at it fresh you know i can't remember the last I, like i listen to slipknot every once in a while and i listen to uh i don't know like old metallica but that's really about it and maybe some megadeth um but i can never get into megadeth i think they got some great stuff it, it, his his voice is kind of rough though that's that's the biggest part for me that's, i can't get past that fucking vocals yeah. man um but i thought as an opener it it goes into all these different parts uh hey yo don't tell me what you want to do kind of thing yeah it's then, to me i think it is a great it's not one of my favorite songs on the record but it's a great setup for the album because it's pretty much like all right get ready for 22 minutes of this yeah and and, and it's, it's a great like uh yeah intro and then he and then he gets to that part um like two and a half minutes in or so, and all the instruments drop. Go ahead, make my day. Put it in it. Shit it. Did it. Did And it, that, that's like such a cool fucking moment. Yeah, dude. Um, Can you imagine that I, live? Like everyone just fucking doing spin kicks. 
off the stage. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Dude, I'd be doing her Karanas all over that fucking crowd. Uh, what what was your uh? Did you have any honorable mentions? You don't know what a her Karana is, do you? Yes, it's the it's the spinny thing where you spin all across the person's body, right? Okay, well, kind of. I don't know. It's when you jump, you like wrap your legs around their head, and you're like, oh, and you kind of throw them, and you twist and throw them. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. you know because grow uh, up, read a book. Like Rey Mysterio and Hologram and like Orange Cassidy will do all this shit where they like twist around the person's body and then finish with a hurricanrana. And so I think I oh okay I think I always thought that that whole thing was called a hurricanrana because it's like they're twisting all around. It's like a hurricane. So they they've judged it up since I stopped watching. They've judged it up. It's dude um. <sighs> I don't know, man. You should watch some. You should watch some uh, Orange Cassidy sometime. That that dude loves doing heard, that shit. I've heard of him. Um, yeah, I need to. I need to fucking find where I can watch AEW because I never catch it, and and I don't know where it is on demand. Uh, I I was. Oh, okay. I'm lucky enough that my partner has uh like cable, and just has like TBS, you know, and so that's we can just. Crazy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's why we're still together. Yeah. You know, it was You're like, I got to watch my Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> if I'm not watching my wrestling soaps, I don't if I'm not watching uh, Randy Orton, you know, you know, his... then I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, on that note, my other favorite song. Is uh, character fraud. Character fraud. Sure. That's what. That's the one where they were he was really ma- matching his vocal cadence with the syncopation of the riffs and the drums. And during I think it was during the choruses and it was just so fucking good. And then that was the one that had that really Pantera dime baggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like very a minute ch- in. very chugging. Very yeah. like and they only do it a couple times and then they yeah. bring it back slower. And it's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. dude, I haven't heard a band do that. Like, I haven't listened to a band that has done that in a long time. I'm like, that is just so fun. Uh, it's, it's, you know, yeah, I don't know. They, they love doing that shit and it works every time. Yeah, it works every time. Can I guess your, uh, oh, and another, uh, an honorable mention for me is White Knuckle Mentality. I just love how fucking angry and fun to sing along to that song is. Uh, White Coast Syndrome? Oh, I, I thought it was white knuckle mentality. I don't know. Are you looking at the album? I wrote it down on my notes. Is that just did I just make up that title? Well, there's there's like I there's Hollister Daydreamer into White Coast Syndrome. I like. Uh, is it called white? Why did it? How did I? Where did I get white knuckle mentality? Yeah, where did I get that from? I don't know, dude. I, uh. <laughs> Is that what it's called on Genius? Maybe, 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 maybe there are some names that got like chopped and screwed across records. Oh my god, I'm freaking out, dude. <laughs> Did I stroke? It's it's track seven, right? Yeah, white coat white coat syndrome. Where did I get white knuckle mentality from? Oh, because that's in the lyrics. Oh. He says, feel the walls closing in. Now my vision is tunneling. Feel my insides fall to the floor. This white knuckle mentality is going to lead me home. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, this is called white knuckle mentality. Well, OK, white <laughs> white coat syndrome is uh, one of my honorable mentions. I really like that song. Um, I like it so much. I didn't know the title. Didn't know it. Uh, let me let me tell you about my second nug. I'm going to guess. Is it the process of weeding out? It is the process of weeding out. I called so, it out earlier. I love that. Good. Bye. Like from a breakdown into another heavier breakdown. Yes. And you the know. whole thing felt like uh, a dime bag Daryl riff to me. So much of that song. And that's that was one of the more like that's just it. They brought the groove on the process of weeding out. And it's like, yeah. dude, this is groove metal, too. Like they're doing some, they're doing a lot of shit, and it felt very Pantera to me. 
It it does it does have that groove about it. It's got the it's head banging. It's nice and paced, um, yeah. but it's also very aggressive. Uh, they got these like syncopated ba 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 kind of things going on. Um, but my favorite part is like a minute and a half in, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, they start doing this solo, and it's super fast-paced, and then it goes into that first breakdown. And then uh, the even slower version. And it's just, I don't know, man. I thought it was so cool. I thought it was such yeah. a cool moment. It honestly is is kind of the thing that won me over on this album. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's funny because it's like song number eight or something, but it's just yeah. like, all right. <laughs> Maybe maybe it took 16 minutes for you to finally get it. <laughs> but I got it. Which isn't that We're bad. Here, baby. It's not that bad. Uh, well, all right then. Thanks for listening, buds. Let us know what you guys thought if you have listened to this album before. Or did we convince you to listen to it? Did you like it? You're welcome. We're, uh, follow us on YouTube, Earbuds Podcast. Uh, follow us on wherever, like subscribe on whatever podcast app you guys are using. Uh, leave us a review on those apps. Five stars only. Five, it's, yeah. It, we're just doing ones that are five stars from now on. Yeah, so. we're only accepting five star reviews. Uh, and tell your friends about us. Go back. We have like 180 episodes. There's, we're bound to have talked about another band or album that you love or hate. And either way. Uh, it's fun to listen to two strangers talk about it. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't you know. know. Maybe was, get what, wise, right? Maybe get, yeah, maybe fucking read a book read and a listen book, to more get episodes. Wise. Get wise. <laughs> some wood. And Ash, what are we listening to next episode? Uh, next episode, we're going to be listening to a, a an artist named Carolyn Rose uh, with her album... Of. With her album Loner. This Carolyn, is Loner. Carolyn Rose, Loner. It's the one with the headband on it. This is just a very. Well, you know, it's. I'm not going to say anything because I don't I don't want to sway you any one way or another, but it's an album that I've been listening to a good bit and I quite enjoy it. Okay, yeah, I've definitely heard of her, uh, and that album actually popped up on my Spotify the other day as a recommended, and I didn't listen to oh, it, really? so I have to now, yeah. Now you got it, baby! Bueno, sounds good. Next episode, Caroline Rose, everyone, listen to that album. Ash, this was good. Lucas, this was good.